Hello and welcome to this month's voted for video by my Patreon and YouTube members. And they voted for how to create a lock picking minigame. This is a three part series and in this first part we will be going through the process of creating the actual lock pick itself and getting it to display on the screen. So let's get started. Now to get started with our pick lock minigame we need to first of all have a door that we can actually unlock. Now in this tutorial I'm not going to go through how to set up a door with a locking feature. Uh, that is something that you can go and find on my channel elsewhere. I've got loads of videos about doors so do check them out and we can go through that over there. But for here we're not worried about it too much. All I've got in here and a brief overview is on my door I've got an open door event, a closed door event leading to a timeline and I've got the interaction interface telling our interaction to open the door. And that is it. Okay so when I walk up to the door I can open it now to lock the door we need to put a pick lock on it now the pick lock is a separate actor that we all generate and make the gameplay happen there but first of all we have to lock the door itself so you can't open it so when you go to your door you need to make sure you've got a variable for when they're locked or not so what we're going to do is locked and on interface with to open door we're going to take the is locked here and put that into a branch and if it's not locked, that's when it's going to open the door. So by default, the lock is set to false, so the door should open. Hit play, door opens. But if I change that to true by default, the door will now be locked. I can't open it. And it's at this branch is where we're going to put our mini lock, uh, a mini game for the padlock. So uh, we need to make the other actor, which is going to be our uh, pick lock. So you can go to blueprint class and choose a actor. And this is going to be called the pick locking or pick lock mini game. We call it. Okay. And inside our pick lock mini game, we need to design our pick lock. Now, obviously, ideally you have models to use. Uh, I don't have models to use, so I'm going to use some basic shapes. You just replace these with whatever models you want to pick for the lock and the actual lock picks themselves. So we're going to first of all um, add a, oh, a com uh, component to this one. I'm going to add a static mesh, and this is going to be the lock itself. And for that, I'm going to use a cylinder. Uh, I'll go for this one. Yeah, there you go. I'll do it. And we're just going to make sure that that's exactly how we want it. Okay, I'm actually going to, uh, no, I'll leave it like that. It'll be fine. And then I want to add. Uh, my pick locks to this. So the way this is going to work is I'm going to have two scene components which will act like the hinges of where these things are going to rotate from and then add models to them. So we're going to add a scene component and we'll do like uh, left pick scene and with it selected you just go to add another component and choose the like mesh and this will be the left lock pick. And over here we're going to design what we're going to use for it and I'm just going to use a simple cube and stretch it out really thin really long okay so let's just bring that way down size <clears throat> now it doesn't really matter the, the true size of this thing you don't obviously make it too small um, like the whole object but it's totally up to you what size you want to do but I would recommend not doing it too big or too small There you go. Don't open it. Right, let's just make it a bit fatter. There we go. Okay. So we're going to put this scene component here. Um, we're going to put that and place that where we want this lock pick to rotate from. So I'm just going to maneuver that over to this side, roughly somewhere there. Okay. So it looks like chopsticks basically coming out. And we're going to duplicate this. Uh, duplicate. To have the right pick scene, and we also have to duplicate the stick as well. Duplicate that one, and put that on. Call it the right uh, lock pick. And on our right scene here, we're just going to move that down and around somewhere else, maybe something like that. 
okay so what is the default starting position so if you weren't touching the gamepad whatsoever what kind of zero zero position would your things have so something like this would be totally fine the last thing we're going to add on here is going to be a scene capture component the scene capture component can be used so we can render this thing as a widget onto the screen so we're going to go to add and do scene capture component 2d and add this little camera thing which we can then maneuver around and point to our lock however you wish it's totally up to you how you position this you can do whatever you like but uh we'll move that that'd be that do just there i think now when you're doing this please make sure that your scene capture component isn't attached to any of the scene components or lock picks themselves otherwise what will happen is when you turn the lock pick the camera will go with it which you obviously don't want so make sure that is the case and if you do make that mistake just drag the scene component to back to the root and you'll say and it will detach it from its current parent now the way your scene capture component 2d works is that it renders what it sees onto a texture so if you go with it selected down the side here you'll see texture target it says none this is the texture that it'll be drawing to so we need to create a new texture for this so let's create a new render target and this will be the pick lock render target okay and you can kind of see in this mini preview down here the pick lock is now visible now obviously you can pick that in further bring it in bring it out customize the look of your thing entirely okay now we're done with this we're going to get our pick lock to display in the game now we've got the lock pick in there we're going to now add it to the world by using our interact with here so on the true is where we're going to spawn our lock pick so we can do spawn actor or from class and we're going to choose our lock pick uh oh i'm sorry pick locking pick locking mini game there you go now you obviously have to give it a spawn transform now what i would recommend you do is put this way below the level okay so it doesn't show up in the game whatsoever otherwise you're gonna have this big floating uh, padlock sitting in the air so on spawn transform we're going to drag this down to make transform and i'm going to but go to location where it says zero 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 i'm going to change the z here to be negative uh let's say 2000 oh 2000 okay so somewhere far below level where it can't be seen um and that's it okay once you've got that we're done we'll come back to this later to finish off the door okay so next we need to get our pick lock to show on the screen now it is rendering to a target we have to tell our target there to show it on a widget so let's create the pick locking widget and create user widget and we'll call this one pick lock widget and we're going to keep it very simple what we're going to do is put a border in here and darken it so the background appears uh, very dark we'll do 0.75 in the alpha there um, and then inside of this we're going to have an image you drag that in and then we'll put center center so it appears in the center of the screen here now the image here is going to be our render target so if i go to my brush here and go to image and i can look for that texture that we made pick lock render target now when you do this it will be very very small so what we want to do is make sure our render target is a lot bigger so if you double click the texture here you open it up on the right hand side you can see we've got size it says 256 by 256 let's increase this let's say it is now 1024 by 1024 so a lot lot larger now you may have also noticed that it was actually sort of like a hole missing in it um the reason why that's the case is because the way the render target works is the alpha channel gets a bit backwards so what we have to do is revert that now to revert it, all we need to do is go into our render target and create material for it. And in here, you want to take the alpha and flip it around. So we take the alpha here and do one minus and put that into the opacity mask. And on the opacity mask, I'm going to change this to be masked. There we are. And hit apply. 
Okay, so I'll go open up our pick lock again. Go to the viewport, click on the camera, just to refresh the widget. If you just hover over it or click on it, it will refresh the texture. And if I open it up now, it should. Uh, oh, no, sorry, it will have the hole here, but if we go to the texture here, you can see in the material that is now done like this. Okay, and so for this material to be shown on the UI, you need to change its material domain. So click on the brown output node here, go to material domain and change it from surface, which means it's going to be part of the world, to user interface, which means we can use it now widget. And when you do so, you'll find the final color will be disconnected. That's fine, just re plug that back in, and it should appear just fine there. And hit save on this and then go back to our widget. And I'm going to choose our new material and change the size here to match what we're trying to do here. So 1024 by 1024. And there is my widget for our, uh, our lockpick. And this will animate and move when we do make it move as well because it's a camera just rendering to a different texture. So let's get it appearing on the screen. Um, so when I go to my pick lock mini game on the event graph here, I'm going to go begin play. We're going to create the widget and we're going to create the pick lock widget and add this to viewport. So if I go back to the game now and interact with this door, we've now got disappearing on the screen. Now, you'll notice that we can see obviously the skybox. Now, the reason why you see the skybox is because that camera is still rendering everything it can see, including the skybox. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell the camera renderer to only render the bits that we want. And that's fortunately quite easy to do. All we have to do is go to our big lock mini game itself. And we're going to drag out our scene capture component 2D. And we're going to do render. Uh, sorry, sorry, it's show render. Show, oh no, uh, show only actor components. This is what we want. Show only actor components. Uh, plug that in. And put in the actor for self. So what that's going to do is only going to render the child uh, components of this actor itself. Um, if you've got any child actors attached, attached to it rather than just straight components, you can also tick this box here to include those in this. We haven't got any, so we don't need to write about that. Um, so now if I click compile and go up to the door now, we should see the widget appear a lot cleaner. Perfect. Um, and that is it. There you have it, we've now got our lockpick showing on the screen. In the next part, we're going to go through the process of able to turn the kit lockpicks and to find the right spot that they need to be put in. You can watch our next part right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lady. We can watch all my videos early before everyone else. Massive thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for the continued support. Thanks for watching, make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.